Welcome back ladies and gents. In this particular teaching video I'll be looking at 3.6 regions. 3.6 represents chapter 3 section 6 of the Pearson A Level Maths Pure Maths Year 1 textbook. I'm going to start this teaching video by going through a mathematical statement. So let's have a look at this mathematical statement. If y is greater than f of x or y is less than f of x then the curve y equal f of x is represented by a dotted line. Okay, so over here, what I want to do is shade in y is greater than f of x. So the curve is represented by a dotted line because equal is not included. And we want greater than f of x, so that is above the curve. That's what we need to shade. So all of this part over here. Next one y is less than f of x so equal is not included the curve is represented by a dotted line we want to shade in everything that's below the curve so that will be all of this part over here okay so here's the region for y is greater than f of x here's the region for y is less than f of x okay let's have a look at another mathematical statement if y is greater than or equal to f of x or y is less than or equal to f of x then the curve y equal f of x is represented by a solid line okay so over here i want to shade in y is greater than or equal to f of x because the equal is included the curve is represented by a solid line and since we have greater than f of x, we need to shade in above the curve. So all of this part over here. Next one, y is less than or equal to f of x. Because the equal is included, the curve is represented by a solid line. And because it's less than, you need to shade in everything below the curve. So all of this part over here. Okay, so that there is the basic understanding of regions. Let's have a look at an example. On a coordinate grid, shade the region that satisfies the inequalities, y is greater than x minus 3 in bracket squared, y plus x is greater than or equal to 5, and y is less than x minus 1. Let's have a look at the first inequality. y is equal to x minus 3 in bracket squared. If I expand this double bracket, the coefficient of x squared will be positive 1, so the shape of the graph will be a u shape. Now, I want to find the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, I need to set y equal to 0. This implies that x minus 3 in bracket squared is equal to 0, which implies that x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus square root 0. This then implies that x minus 3 is equal to 0, hence x is equal to 3. So ladies and gents, the x-intercept will be 3, 0. Now, I want to find the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, I need to set x equal to 0. This implies that y is equal to 0 minus 3 in bracket squared, which implies that y is equal to 9. So ladies and gents, the y-intercept will therefore be 0, 9. Okay, so over here, I've got a greater than. So the curve y equal x minus 3 in bracket squared will be represented by a dotted line. My y-intercept is 0, 9, and my x-intercept is 3, 0. So we've got a u-shape represented by a dotted line. Like that. Okay, so now let's move on to the second inequality. First of all, I can rearrange this inequality to give me y is greater than or equal to minus x plus 5. y is equal to minus x plus 5. Over here, the coefficient of x is negative 1, so we have a straight line with negative gradient. So the shape will be like this. Okay, so now I want the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, I need to set y equal to 0. This implies that minus x plus 5 is equal to 0, which implies that x is equal to 5. So ladies and gents, the x-intercept will therefore be 5, 
0. OK, now I want to find the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, I need to set x equal to 0. This implies that y is equal to minus 0 plus 5, which implies that y is equal to 5. Therefore, the y-intercept will be 0, 5. OK, now, over here we have a greater than or equal to. So the graph y equal minus x plus 5 is represented by a solid line because we have an equal. Right, so the y-intercept is 0, 5. And the x-intercept is 5, 0. So we have a solid line. Like that. Okay, so let's move on to the third inequality. y equal x minus 1. The coefficient of x is positive 1. So the shape of this graph will be a straight line and it will look something like this. Okay, so now I want to find the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, I must set y equal to 0. This implies that x minus 1 is equal to 0, which implies that x is equal to 1. So the x-intercept, ladies and gents, will just be 1, 0. Right, so let's go ahead and work out the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, I need to set x equal to 0. This implies that y is equal to 0 minus 1, which implies that y is equal to minus 1. So the y-intercept, ladies and gents, will just be 0 minus 1. OK, now, for the third inequality, we have a less than. So the graph y equal x minus 1 will be represented by a dotted line, because equal is not included. So firstly, what I'm going to do is label the y-intercept, which is 0 minus 1. Then we have the x-intercept, which is a 1, 0. And we're going to represent the graph y equal x minus 1 using a dotted line because equal is not included over here. So it will look something like this. Right, now we need to shade in the region. OK, so y is greater than x minus 3 in bracket squared. So here's my curve. I need to shade in everything above the curve. Perfect. y is greater than or equal to minus x plus 5. Here's my line. I need to shade in everything above the line. y is less than x minus 1. Here's the line. I need to shade everything below the line. I see that the overlap will be over here. That there is my overlap. That precisely represents the region R. So I can shade it in a little bit more to make it clear. So this here is my region R. These three inequalities are satisfied by shading this particular region. And that there, ladies and gents, completes my example. Here is an exam style question. Figure 1 shows a line L1 with equation 2y equal to x and a curve C with equation y equal to 2x minus 1 over 8x squared. The region R shown shaded in figure 1 is bounded by the line L1, the curve C and the line L2. Given that the line L2 is parallel to the y-axis, identify the inequalities that define R. First of all, let's have a look at the quadratic. Now the quadratic is represented by a solid curve. And so, that means in our inequality we must include the equal. The line L1 is represented by a solid line. So in our inequality for L1 we must include the equal. The line L2 is represented by a dotted line. So in our inequality for L2, we must not include the equal. Let's first of all look at the quadratic. If we're shading in this part, we're shading above the quadratic. So the inequality for the quadratic will be 
y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 1 over 8x squared. Let's have a look at the line L1. If we're shading this part over here, we're shading below the line. So the inequality for the line L1 will therefore be 2y is less than or equal to x. Now the interesting one is a line L2. To find the line L2, we must find this x-intercept of the curve. So, for the curve, we're going to find the x-intercept. So our curve is y equal to 2x minus 1 over 8x squared. So to find the x-intercept, ladies and gents, we must set the y equal to 0. This implies that 2x minus 1 over 8x squared is equal to 0. I can solve this by the method of factorization. I can take out a common factor of x. So inside the bracket, I will have 2 minus 1 over 8x equals 0. So we have that x is equal to 0 or 2 minus 1 over 8x is equal to 0. So you can see over here, that's x equals 0. We want this x-intercept. To get this x-intercept, we have to solve this equation. So minus 1 over 8, x is equal to minus 2. Therefore, x is equal to 16. So this line over here must be x equals 16. This shaded part over here is to the left of x equals 16. Okay, so the inequality for the line L2 will therefore be x is less than 16. Okay, the equal is not included because for the line L2 we have a dotted line. So the inequalities that define R are y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 1 over 8x squared, comma, 2y is less than or equal to x, and x is less than 16. So that there, ladies and gents, completes this exam style question. And it also completes this teaching video. Like always, if you found this teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe.